Hello, my name is Brandon with RPG Overviews, and I'm going to be looking at Wretched Role Playing Game. Of course, I've done other Wretched videos before, if you've uh, checked out my channel before. And this is uh, the book that you can have that will let you run a whole bunch of different settings. Um, all of them in their Wretched Verse, the Red Room. And Miguel here, I'm not going to say his last name because I can't, um, uh, he has put together uh, pretty much a core book for their role playing game. But it does connect with all the Wretched Verse books as well. So it's available on their website in PDF and on Lulu in print. That's where this came from. I'll have a link down in the description, of course, so you can check them out if you want to pick them up. So here it is, the cover. Here's the spine. Pretty normal, kind of very much the way that they have done their other books when it comes to the back. But this uh, cover is very very cool I think I gives uh, I give them a thumbs up on this um, it's got multiple characters from the different settings uh, it just looks cool it's got a neat kind of design to it um, it's not AI generated and it's really really well done I like it yeah, I think it stands out as something kind of different and you can see you've got some fantasy characters some space characters and maybe some some kind of noir type characters right there so very cool so it is, a couple of these pages here are color, but the book in art is actually in black and white for that OSR type look. Here is the people who made it, and it does use AI generated art, but it does have some other artists as well, as well as some Adobe stock. And the AI generated art, of course, is only getting better and better. And so let's take a look through as we flip through. So here's table of contents. Uh, this could be a long video, and I'm gonna try not to make it be that one because I've talked about some of these other settings and stuff. So you know they've got a bunch: bastards, country, epoch, uh, retroportation, new f flesh, space, apocalypse, darkness, vigilantes. Pretty much all this, the settings that are pretty much common in role-playing games, they're here. You're going to be playing an anti-hero once again. So it's going to tell you, like, what is the OSR? What has changed? Well, the OGL is no longer there. So they have changed the names of uh, certain designations. So strength is muscles, intelligence is brains, dexterity is agility, so on and so forth. So that is good to get away from that. But it may be a little bit of a, you know, you'll have to kind of do some converting if you've got some of the other books. It's just something that you'll probably be able to pick up on rather relatively fast. So here's some great art once again by that artist of the cover. I like all the different limbs being very much obviously from the different settings that they've done. And so here's the basics of character creation. It has the deadly sins in there. Of course, that's kind of the, the mainstay of this their games. But one thing they've done is, I like this, they've summarized what the seven transgressions are. And you play your character as an anti-hero who's going to embrace one of these. What they've done is they've given you a sinner's bane. So pretty much, whenever you are you find yourself, like for Wrath here, you find yourself in a situation uh, like this, it says whenever there's a confrontation, you must roll under your wits to control the urge of engaging in violence, verbal or physical. Uh, that's going to be kind of rough. That could really come back to haunt you, but that's the price you pay for being a wrathful character. But you're going to get a boon, and that boon is going to be that when you try to intimidate somebody, you're going to plus one bonus to your roll. It's going to be like that for every one of these transgressions and these deadly sins. I think it's a really good addition to the to their lineup, and I'm not sure if it's been added into one of the other books that I don't have, but I like it. So thumbs up to that. You're going to have a background. It's going to be your origin and your life path. You'll roll a d6, and that's going to give pretty much your in essence, your class structure. So you're either destitute, struggling, you're comfortable, pretty much your wealth. You're uh, wealthy, filthy rich, or you're elite. And each one of those is going to give you some skills like or some bonus to your, att to your um, attributes, such as you get plus one to toughness and wits. For struggling, you get plus one to brains. And for wealthy, you get plus one to magnetism. So, and so on and so forth. You're going to roll a D10. It's going to tell you what your your pretty much what your old occupation was. Like how did you grow up? You were a factory worker, prostitute, scavenger, squatter, uh, things like that. And they'll give you bonuses to skills. So that's obviously very cool. And if you need that, you know it's here for you to be able to roll up to give your character some background. If you don't want to make it up yourself, of course I think you could probably just talk to your game master maybe and ask, hey, I want to be this. And of course some of these are not going to really work out with some of the other settings. You're not going to have a TV movie celebrity in uh you know wretched bastards but maybe it could be like a juggler or a performer or something like that or an, an actor 
Um, so you'll have to do a little bit of changing around for some of those. Then you're going to roll up some, some life events, and these are tied into their other Wretched Burst settings, such as uh, Wretched Darkness or Exploitation games. Uh, so like right here, uh, you were kidnapped by a group of cultists and held captive in a remote location. You're going to get the drawback flashbacks, but you'll also get the skill survival at plus two. So it's going to be, again, adding on to your character, making them more uh, unique uh, as you roll those up or picking them possibly. So space, apocalypse. This has got a lot of meat to it. New flesh. It's 294 pages, I believe. Here's Wretched Bastard. So it's going to be kind of like your basic fantasy thing. Wretched Country for your Western Wretched Epoch. Um, rolling up your attributes, you can do it kind of in the old way of 3D6 in order for each attribute, and you can't move them around. Uh, and it's going to explain about the new name, you know, what the new um, attributes are, your health, your species, a bunch of different species. You've seen these probably, uh, a good bit of these in some of the other settings. But they're going to have requirements, advantages, and disadvantages. And it'll tell you, like this one here is from Wretched Bastards, Androids obviously from Wretched Space. And you got some stuff from Wretched Darkness. Here's your angel type character. You've got your normal stuff like dwarf, elf, and gnome. So, you know, really this is a uh, universal game when it comes to settings. So it's got pretty much everything that you could pretty much need. So that's going to be pretty helpful. Lugaru. There's also a couple of, uh, of these that I can't pronounce. So I'm not going to make more of a fool of myself than I already do. Here is, uh, they have some sayings, of course, from some famous people or some movies and stuff like that. So your race is an occupation, and you've got your archetype. So you've got, like, assassin or common citizen, cyborg, investigator, man of action, once again, your pilot or performer. And then you're going to have your archetypes that, you're, that are going to give you some bonuses as well that you can pick uh, if you want to be, like, a serial killer or something like that. So, uh, again, here's some of that art, H.P. Lovecraft uh, quote. This is a big section here, since there's a lot to, to, uh, to pretty much cover uh, all the different settings that they've made. And of course you can see the AI generator art. It looks really good. Um, it's doing better across the board. Femme Fatale, there's that one, Mobster, and then a whole bunch of skills as you can see. So nothing really much here that we haven't seen. Now one thing you're going to find, or you won't find, is you're not going to find any monsters in this book because they're obviously going to be in their settings. And that's probably the best way to go about that. I mean you'd really blow this book up and kind of leave those other books kind of... Uh, not worth it if you've got kind of everything in this book and that makes sense to me plus you're able to fill it out more with the the proper uh, fluff that you need for those uh, creatures and monsters and stuff so here's a bunch of those skills they're broken up into different categories like physical skills there's a bunch of stances and stuff for combat and martial arts and whatnot like that social skills you've got some perks and drawbacks We've seen a lot of those in the other game. But again, it's just really nice to have this all together. You, you grab this book, you know, and you're going to have a bunch of stuff that you could play just straight out of this. I mean, you might have to make up some of the monsters or some of the enemies if you don't have the other books. But boy, this is going to really help you. Uh, aging. It's got everything pretty much you need. Superhuman perks and drawbacks if you're a superhuman. And this is going to be in Delvin with, obviously, their uh, wretched superheroes, their vigilantes. Uh, so that's going to be cool. You've got that. I mean, I, I, I know there's some books out there that are like GURPS. You know, GURPS, sp sp they split it up into a whole bunch of different types of stuff. Uh, but when it comes to the different settings and making your character. But uh, this has got a lot going, obviously, for it. So here's a bunch of equipment. So it's got MZ and RAS and stuff like that. That's going to be melee zone, range attack zone, or out of range. Uh, that's what that means there. So that's how they've kind of doing the range for it. It uses, of course, normal dice. I mean, this is still a D20 type system. It's just the uh, the OGL has been stripped out of it. Of course, a lot of these weapons and stuff will not be used in some of the settings that you may have. And you're going to roll up an acquisition target number in order to get these items instead of actual gold and money or dollars, whatever it is, credits. There's a selection of cybernetics that you'll find from, more than likely it was from Wretched Space. Uh, surgical mistakes might happen with some of these implants. Um, you've got cyber stuff, biotech augments, whole bunch of stuff here in this book. And here's some cool art once again. I mean, it, it kind of changes from kind of cartoony stuff to AI generated stuff. Um, hopefully, you know, you like both of them. Uh, you've got the Wretched Commandments. Once again, I know I've talked about these. These are the commandments that are based off the Ten Commandments, and if you do them, you'll get 
bonuses. You'll get experience points. So like on or no one, if the character acted selfishly, they get one experience point. So you're going to be doing a lot of this stuff and being the wretched characters that you are. So that's one thing you have to remember. These are still not uh, squeaky clean, fantastic, lawful, good people. They, they are your anti-heroes. So again, the wanted level, notoriety, as you do those things, your notoriety is going to go up. This could be, you know, a lot of this stuff is kind of the same stuff I've talked about. Um, they've got some optional wretchedness, the wretched pool. You can get, you're going to get some points that you can spend um, to do some stuff that you'll get, like fooling an NPC in a business deal. You'll get one wretched point, uh, and see each each point in the pool can be traded for a plus one to a roll, and it can be used in the same gaming session or save to be spent in the next one if the game master allows it. Wretched Rush pretty much lets you have kind of like a bloodied status uh, where you are, you kind of get like a, a boost to your character once you start taking a lot of damage. Uh, Wild Die can be added. Um, at, Wild Die is actually kind of neat. So what happens is the game master has a number of Wild Dice equal to the number of players at the game session. Each player has one Wild Die per game session. And at certain cinema moment, moments, either the GM or the player can use a wild die to modify a roll. A roll. The player GM rolls a d6. If the result is an odd number, that number is added to as a penalty to the roll the GM or the player is about to make. Even, of course, is a bonus. So it could be give or take there with the GM or the player. You've got an example of it right there. Then you've got your combat. Again, this kind of cartoony art, which I think is fun. Um, you've got the order of combat here. Fairly standard stuff. Cover, damage, hit locations. It's got a lot because it has to deal with, you know, firearms, short bursts, auto fire, called shots. Here's wrestling, pistol duels, which they've had before. Uh, fanning your, your gun, how to do that, um, which was always kind of a doozy. And um, when you played like Savage Worlds, Deadlands, you've got sword duels, optional critical hits here for the different types of weapons. And then you've got vehicle combat. So everything that you need from that. Uh, it's going to be here, spaceship, critical hits, tables, vehicle dogfights, cinematic maneuvers and scale. Here's all their stats. You've got spaceships, vehicle customizations, sea battles. Here's some ship types. Here's damage and healing, telling you all about that. Poisons and whatnot, falling, disease. And I think with it being black and white and not in color, I think the AI-generated art doesn't stand out so much to me as being AI. Of course, I mean, I can still see that it is. But I think that's helped it being in black and white and how much better it is. You don't have a lot of, you know, extra fingers or extra limbs or something like that like it was doing. So here's going to be a bunch of effects that might happen to your character. Hunger and thirst, exposed to vacuum or radiation. Here's some nudity, so I've got that going on for you. Carousing and gambling. It wouldn't be the Red Room without a little bit of nudity. Um, so plot hooks for carousing events. It's got a lot going on. And here is some adversary. So, while it doesn't have all of them like done up, it gives you some of this uh, that you can roll up. Pretty much general classifications. Are they an animal, a vegetable, fungus, or a supernatural creature? And then some abilities they may have, special abilities. So that's the only section there is for that. You can still you know create your own, um, but it obviously it's not fleshed out like a normal monster section. And then you're going to go into their Wretched Verse kind of setting stuff that is uh, across the board such as the beyond once again dealing with fear rolls uh, building up tension so you've got this tension tables here fear effects for supernatural events insanity derangements how to recover from insanity uh, conjuring magic whole big section here on magical ri rituals as you can see the different rituals they have in their different levels um, yeah so it's really taken all the kind of crunch of those books of the other wretched verse books and putting them into one book psychic talents but if this is something you're looking to do pretty much if you like that system that d20 kind of third edition system and just kind of crammed all into one book for all these different settings then you're good to go here's settlement management which is pretty cool population and birth and deaths building it up um, You've got some events, trading, employees, table. And so that's a neat little section that's been added to it there that I haven't seen in any of the other games. And then you've got your uh, your character sheet here. Of course, all these different skills, all these different perks and drawbacks are written on there that you can, you can uh, tick off. 
and here's rituals and spells and psychic talents. So obviously you're going to have some a lot to go through with that. And then of course they're going to tell you about their other games. You know, you can see the covers of them here. They've really been doing a lot of work putting stuff out, and that's the end of it. So overall. Um, interesting that it's in black and white. I wasn't expecting that when I first saw it. I love this cover. I think it's great. Um, this is all the crunch out of all the Wretched Verse books is, the books that have been released, I, I believe. Kind of crammed into here. OGL stripped away from it. Uh, very versatile. Um, very kind of universal. You could s not use with the Deadly Sins, Transgression stuff if you didn't want. You still got a fine game in here. But I would use it to play anti-hero characters, much like it's designed for... Um, so yeah, it's uh, a good pickup if you like the Wretched Verse to have all the rules 